afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to Locomotive Systems Training. Uh, we're still on with the FRA. It's a huge, huge topic uh, to talk about. So uh, we're going to go over and we're going to look at uh, some, some other inf interesting information. We're still in the air brakes. Again, FRA, Federal Railroad Administration, General Requirements for Locomotive. We're going to look at rule number 232.105 and rule 232.109. And this, by the way, is LSTV-0. So let's take a look. 232.105. Now, if you remember last week, we had talked about, uh, I think it was last week, we talked about handbrakes. And it's quite a bit of uh, uh, regulation regarding handbrakes. Of course, there's been a big boom in, in the world of handbrakes um, uh, in the last few years. Uh, we've gone from a regular, well, from basically, basically two types of handbrake, a wheel type. A wheel type ratcheting and also a lever type that was basically it now they've gone to, to, to they still have those out there but they also now have parking brakes where you push a button or and other and other ways of, of doing it where the, where the wheel turns or, or just supplies the brake by itself otherwise known as electronic parking brake or electric parking brake anyway so we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, parking brakes because uh, this is still in that in that section of it general requirements for locomotive number uh, a the air equipment on a locomotive shall be in safe and suitable condition for service. Now what they're talking about there is the air brake system. Unlike like an 18-wheeler or your automobile, uh, the air brake system is a little bit different. Now an 18-wheeler uses an air braking system, but they, re they operate in reverse of a locomotive and a train. Uh, here we use air brakes to apply the brakes. They use a spring, I believe, but correct me if I'm wrong out there, all you mechanics that work in the trucking world, um, they use a spring to apply the brakes and air to release it, but on a locomotive they use air to apply the brakes and a spring to release it. So uh, a little bit of difference there, or actually a whole lot of difference. But anyway, the air brake equipment on a locomotive shall be, in, it says right there, there's no ambiguity here, shall be in a safe and suitable condition for service. In other words, in other words it has to operate as intended. Um, if I'm moving the automatic brake valve handle, the independent brake valve handle, I'm supposed to get X amount of pressure out of it. If I get Y amount of pressure, either too much or not enough, then that becomes a defect. That becomes a problem. So it's got to work as intended. Um, you know, as important as it is to get a locomotive and train rolling, it's even more important to be able to, to slow it down and stop it. So the air brake system has to work properly. Uh, section B, all locomotives ordered on or after August 1st. 2002 are placed in service for the first time on or after April 1st, 2004, shall be equipped with a handbrake or a parking brake. Now let me stop there for just a second. Prior to this date, back in the, what I would call the old days, prior to these two dates here, if you wanted to buy a, a locomotive and you wanted it to come with a handbrake, you had to order that. Uh, that was a, an additional option you would buy with a locomotive. But as these two dates clearly uh, spell out, ordered August 1st, 2002, or placed in service for the first time after, on or after April 1st, 2004, that now is a requirement. So any locomotive built, and of course this is now 2015, every locomotive out there manufactured now comes equipped with a handbrake, the regulations right there. Okay, so it says, and be equipped with a handbrake or parking brake, that is, number one, capable of application or activation by hand, hence the term hand brake, capable of release by hand, whether it be a wheel type or a lever type or a push a button type, whatever. Actually, this is the handbrake, not the electrical brake. And number three, capable of holding the unit on a 3% grade. Now, it's my understanding the way a 3% grade is, is explained is you take 100 feet in length on the ground, and if it's a flat surface and you raise one end up three feet and run it down to where that originating point would be, that would be considered a 3% grade. Okay? Uh, again, we don't want these locomotives moving. They're, some of these locomotives weigh over 210 tons apiece. And the last thing you want these things doing is growing a brain of their own and actually with the automatic or the air brakes releasing, you don't want this thing becoming a rollaway. And that has happened, unfortunately, in the real world. And it has caused tragedy, which is the reason why there's laws on the books to prevent that from happening. And of course, those rules, even though, and again, this is the federal minimum, a lot of railroad companies will actually enhance these regulations, which is a good thing. All right, and Section C, on locomotives so equipped to hand 
or parking brake, as well as its parts and connections shall be inspected. That means you have to look at all the springs, the levers, the wheel, the handles, the release mechanisms, the chain, the pulleys, or what's known, also known as the shiv. You have to look at all of these components to make sure that they're there, and number two, they're functioning properly. Okay? <clears throat> shall be inspected and necessary repairs made as often as service requires, but no less than every 368 days. Well, we all know there's 365 days in a year, but the FRA is going to give you three extra days to comply. Okay? So once a year, what we call on an annual basis, that locomotive will be brought into a service facility somewhere, and the, and the handbrake will be inspected. If it, if it has defects, they'll be noted, and then they'll make the necessary repairs. They'll be logged into the system, and then off you go. You've got a good working, working handbrake again. The date from the last inspection shall be either entered on the form FRA F1680 49A, and all that information right there we simply means we call that the blue card, okay? Or suitably stenciled or tagged on the locomotive. So a lot of times they'll have an inspection sticker on the date. Sometimes I'll say, uh, uh, um, uh, there'll be like a peel off label or some are painted on, but it has to be on there either on the locomotive or on the blue card, okay? Um, <clears throat> this one here is one of the most important air brake rules in the world of air brakes when it comes to locomotives and, and freight cars. It says here, the amount of leakage from the equalizing reservoir on locomotive and related piping shall be zero. And I'm going to repeat that. I know we haven't gone into air brakes yet, but we'll, we'll get there. Uh, the amount of leakage from equalizing reservoir on locomotives and related piping shall be zero. Absolutely zero. None. Silch. On the locomotive related piping shall be zero unless the system is capable of maintaining the set pressure at any service application with a brake control valve in the freight position. Now, let me back that up a little bit and explain that. If I have a, a pneumatic locomotive, and let's back that up a little bit further, there are several different types of braking systems on older style locomotives as compared to newer style. So basically there's two types of uh, air brake systems in, on, in the world of, of freight locomotives. One is what they call electronic brakes, which is uh, uh, New York Air Breaker Canor. Um, it would be CCB2, con Computer Control Brake System, Generation 2, CCB1, a Wabcore, a Wabtech, um, you know, Epic Air, that type of thing. Those will all be called electronic brakes, uh, where we take a lot of the valving and we turn it into electronic components instead of pneumatic components. The other type of air brakes is what they call pneumatic brakes. 30A CDW is one brand and the other one is called 26L. There's also 26LU, there's also 24RL, there's number six, and number four. there's a whole bunch. Instead of getting the older, older, older equipment, uh, there's all types of, of uh, unique uh, air brake systems out there. But basically there's two types, electronic air brakes and pneumatic air brakes. Now, this section right here is the probably one of the most important. I don't wrong, they're all very important. But this is the one here that can really get you in hot water uh, if you're not complying with that for whatever reason. Okay? And, and again, it's that important. I'm going to say it again. D, the amount of leakage from the equalizing reservoir on locomotives and related piping shall be zero unless the system is capable of maintaining the set pressure at any service application with a brake control valve in the freight position. If such leakage is detected en route or en route, whichever one you choose, the train may be moved only to the next nearest forward location where the equalizing reservoir leakage can be corrected. Now, without going into a whole lot of, of air brake theory and detail, this little system right here, the equalizing reservoir circuit, and the lead locomotive runs anywhere, if it's pneumatic, it runs about 26 feet in length total. That little bitty equalizing reservoir circuit actually can control a brake pipe circuit that can be several miles long. So all of a sudden that little equalizing reservoir circuit just got really, really, really important. Okay? Uh, and again, once we get into the world of air brakes, we'll be able to explain this better. But for right now, we now know that the amount of equalizing reservoir leakage and related piping shall be zero. Okay? All right, so let's go, let's go to the next one. On locomotive equipped with electronic brakes, if the system logs or displays, we talked about electronic brakes, or if the system logs or displays a fault related to an equalizing reservoir leakage, the train may be moved only to the nearest forward location where the necessary repairs can be made. It doesn't say you can skip a, 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 a location, go to the next one or the next one or the next one. No, no, no. FRA is crystal clear on this. They say that if you develop an equalizing reservoir leak 
or in the world of electronic air brakes, an equalizing reservoir leakage problem, you know, uh, could be a solenoid, that type of thing going bad, you're only allowed to move that locomotive to the next forward location that has the ability to make that repair. And that has to be made. Can be made. Crystal clear. There's no shoulda, woulda, coulda there. E, use of the feed brake or regulating valve to control braking is prohibited. Okay, F, the passenger position on the locomotive brake control stand shall be used only if trailing equipment is designed for graduated release brakes or if equalizing reservoir leakage occurs in route and its use is necessary to safely control the movement of the train until it reaches the next forward location where the re reservoir leakage can be corrected. Now, section F, and if you go back to section D for just a second, right here it talks about equalizing reservoir leakage. Now go ahead and go back to F. Here again, it brings the point up again. Remember, there's two types of locomotive that you'll find out in the, in the nation's railroad. One is going to be freight service. The other will be passenger service. Yeah, I know there's, there's like antique trains around, uh, exhibition trains, that kind of thing, and I get that. But for, for revenue business, there's basically two types of trains. There's freight trains and there's uh, uh, passenger trains. Now, go back one more time, if you would, please. Okay. This, and remember it said right here under section D, freight position, which means referring to a freight train. Go back to section F over here. Here we're talking about passenger position. That would be passenger locomotives. Car, or locomotives and cars that are designed to operate in the passenger world. Okay? Now, passenger position on the locomotive brake control stand shall be used only if the graduate or treading equipment is designed for graduated brake release or if equalizing reservoir occurs in route and its use is necessary to safely control the movement of the train until it reaches the next forward location where the reservoir leakage can be corrected. So, we're all driving this freight train down the road, okay, and the brakes are working okay, but after a few little, little bit of time, we notice that we have an equalizing reservoir leak. Remember that 26 foot of, of, of control air that we're using? Well, all of a sudden, that's leaking down a little bit. You think, well, that's not a big deal. Well, actually, it's a huge deal. The FRA is crystal clear, ladies and gentlemen, that if I develop an equalizing reservoir leak in route, where is it at? Where am I at in route? Right here. In route. And I, and I, and I want to be able to control my brakes properly. I can take that locomotive, a freight locomotive, and I can take that cutoff pilot valve, and you may or may not know what that is, and go from freight, FRT, down to pushing the button and to put it to pass or PASS for passenger service and I will have the ability to maintain any equalizing equalizing reservoir leakage at any handle position. Now for some of you you'll get it and understand it for some of you you won't you'll just have to wait till we talk about air brakes. Now but it's that important to understand just how important section D and section F here work hand in hand. If I develop an equalizing reservoir leak in route I can run it in from freight turn it into passenger and I can get it there to my next location, but only the next location. Okay? Until it reaches, and the key word there is next. Next forward location where the leakage can be, re, can be corrected. Okay? Two very hugely important regulations in the world of air brakes. Uh, the next one down, G, when taking charge of a locomotive or locomotive consist. And of course, everybody knows the difference between a locomotive and a locomotive consist. A locomotive is one, what we call in the railroad industry, a unit. A single locomotive is called a single unit. If I MU or couple up and I, and I lace up all the air hoses and the electrical jumper cable from two or more units here, that's called multiple uniting, okay? Uh, and that would be, that would be, I have two or more locomotives, that would be called a locomotive consist. That's where two or more locomotives are coupled and connected together to make one big, big locomotive. Might be three, might be five, I've seen them as high as ten. All coupled up together. But no matter. When taking charge of a locomotive or locomotive contest, an engineer must know that the brakes are in operative condition. Let's go back a page for just a second. Let's go back one more. Uh, oh, gee, look what section A said. The air equipment of a locomotive shall be in a safe and suitable condition for service. And that's really a very, very neat thing that the FRA does. And go back to where we were, please. One neat thing that the FRA does for us, they provide ample opportunity to let us know that by, by repeating this information, it's there and it's that important, okay? It's there and it's that important. So, uh, you know, we're dealing with hundreds of tons or uh, like, a, like a thousand of tons if you have a freight train behind this, these locomotives, 
you know, public safety, uh, employee safety, you know, operating crew safety, mechanical department safety, uh, is all paramount to this stuff working the way it should. That's why the regulations are written the way they are. All right, so woo, that's quite a bit of information we talked about. You know, the handbrakes, we talked about equalizing reservoir leakage, and boy, that's one of the big ones right there, whether it be electronic air brakes or pneumatic brakes. If you have, a, if you have an equalizing reservoir it, in, uh, leaking in route, you can only ring that locomotive and put it right in passenger service until you get to the next forward location that has the ability to make that repair. I can't state that enough. Okay? So, as we said before, and we'll say it again, this is the FRA's website. Go visit it, www.fra.dot.gov. Once again, that's www.fra.dot.gov. And if you get a chance, go ahead and take a look at our website. We are at lst-ca.com. Once again, that's lst-ca.com. And one more little thing I want to throw out there. We got a brand new revised basic air brake class we're coming out with here in about a month. So. Give us a call, we'll talk about it. Thank you and have a safe day.